to me very carefully. They, can I say this? They sell cars, they sell homes, you can get those. We're wired differently. We have to set a goal that if we hit that goal, we're guaranteed to make sure all that other stuff in the middle is gonna happen. All right, so I need you to do me a huge favor. I, I, I need you, your appetite. So ET, why three o'clock in the morning? Why don't you sleep? My appetite, my appetite. I say, ET, I want more, I can do more. If I accomplish this without a father, if I accomplish this with my mom being a teenage mom, if I accomplish this as a high school dropout, now that I have people like Glenn in my life, now that I have people like Bob Proctor in my life, now that I have people like John Maxwell in my life, what can I accomplish now? If I can accomplish these things from this start, now that I'm at this place, knowing what I know now, what can I come? And I want you to think about that. I want you to think about more than just what you're going to do financially, more than what you're going to do in this industry in the next three years, right? More than that, I ask you the question, what's your appetite? What are you, what are you going to do that will in, ensure that when the alarm clock goes off, that you are already up 10, 20 minutes before your alarm clock blows up? Why? You've heard me say it before, no alarm clock needed. My passion wakes me up. Listen to me, no alarm clock needed. When Glenn said six o'clock, I don't know how it happened, jet lag and all, went to sleep about three and the body just boom, 540, woke me up. Hey guys, it's time to get up. We gotta go to lobby at six o'clock. Nine o'clock AM call, 11 o'clock our time. I don't know what happened, but Boom, five minutes before 11, the body woke me up. No alarm, I haven't used an alarm clock in over 20 years. What is it? Internally, Eric, I wanna be successful. I wanna execute. I wanna make all my dreams become a reality. I wanna do everything I said I'm going to do. So my appetite increases, it gets stronger every year. I want more every year. I wanna do more every year. I wanna help more every year. I wanna be bolder. I wanna be better. I wanna be stronger every single Single year every single year your appetite should go up you should never get settled you should never get settled you should never get content every single year I told you I've been married for 24 years so you think after 24 years ET could just go to Australia right and just chill no nope. no nope. I'm asking my wife what are you wearing before I leave because I want to iron your clothes for the 11 days when I leave I, what are you wearing I call my son, I need you to make sure the meal prep, I need to make sure the bed is clean, I need to make everything I do, son, I need you to do it, and I'll give you a couple, I'll, I'll wire you a couple dollars, son, just take a picture of it, and I'll wire you, why? Because when you get content, when you settle, somebody's chasing you, somebody's coming from behind, and somebody's trying to take your spot. And so every single day when you wake up, you got to set new goals, new benchmarks. You got to raise it higher and higher and higher so you can make your dreams become a reality. All right, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Listen to me. A true hunter, watch me, watch me. A true hunter is wired differently. He's wired differently. Doesn't have the same makeup. Listen to me. What makes a gazelle a gazelle is how he's wired. What makes a lion a lion? Okay, let me explain to you. When a lion sees a gazelle and the gazelle sees the lion, both beasts see each other at the exact same time. When the gazelle sees the lion because of how he's wired, he automatically, fear takes over. When the lion sees the gazelle, he lights up. It's showtime. The hunt is on, this is what I was made for. And if you've ever studied a lion, in his natural environment. Watch this, guys. If an animal is wounded, the lion won't even do what? Won't attack. The lion will only attack if it's a real, if it's healthy and it's running. It's like, all right, bet, here we go now, all right? If a lion's like, oh, the gazelle's like, oh. The lion, like, let him go. It's no fun in that, he's already dead. Right, for real, there's some of you, there are opportunities that you're like, it's too difficult, it's too hard, nobody can do it. You're not wired properly. A lion welcomes the challenge. As a matter of fact, they don't get excited unless it is a challenge. They're wired differently. The gazelle immediately, when the gazelle immediately sees a lion, the first thing it thinks about is, let's go. First thing the lion does is like, let's eat. So you gotta do me a huge favor. If you're gonna get to a certain level, you gotta welcome it. So, so everybody's like, ET man, you're just so positive. Everything in your life, man, you just, you just got it going on.
I'm a real lion. And with a real lion, you'll never know. You'll never know what's going on in my life because I'm a lion. And under every single circumstance, I'm a lion. So I lost five aunts to cancer in the last six years. I lost two last year. Lion, still TGIM, still. You never, saw, you never saw it. This is a special service announcement from Eric Thomas and ETA. My aunts have died, therefore we'll be taking a six month hiatus from TGIM. You no, know, actually my aunt's death made me go and do TGIM like I never did it before. Most of you heard the mixtape, not, not even a year ago, went to the doctor's office with my wife. Look guys, you always know something's wrong when the doctor, when it takes your physician like 45 minutes to 50 to come in, like something's doesn't take that long. Physician comes in, puts up the x-ray, shows my wife, points to the brain, and said, we found seven legions on your brain. I'm a lion. My wife looked at the doctor, the doctor looked at my wife, my wife looked at me. I'm like, I don't have, four, I don't have seven legions on my brain. Why is my wife looking at me? Because she's like, you a lion. And you're going to be able to tell me if I can get through this or not. And so my wife looks at me. I'll be honest with you guys, when they first told us she had seven leaves on the brain, she didn't break a, she didn't break a sweat, but then they said, you have to stop working until we find out what it is. And she said, how long? I said, three months, six months. She said, I gotta stop working because she's a, she's a beast. So the disease didn't bother her, but the fact that you can't hunt anymore, that bothered her. So my wife looks at me and says, what kind, no words, but she kind of looks at me like, okay, this is terrible. We've been together since we were 16. You've helped me to get out of everything. What now? I said, we can, we will. We must. We got a son graduating from college. You need to be there. We got a daughter that's going to finish high school in two years. You need to be there. You can get through this. Oh, I'm wired differently. I didn't start crying. I didn't say, why me? Why my wife? I'm doing good to the world. I'm not hurting anybody. Why me? I'm wired differently. We, a t-shirt came from it. A video came from it that has over a million hits that inspired people called what? I can, I will, I must turn it into a t-shirt. We turn tragedy into triumph. We turn tri- that's what lions do. Lions don't cry, lions don't give up, lions don't quit, lions hunt. That's what we do for a living. And if you are a true lion, it does not make a difference what the circumstances is. So what? We're in a recession. We made more money in the recession than we've ever made before. As a matter of fact, it was the recession that birthed us. We welcome the recession. Uh, Y'all need a motivator now more than you've ever needed one before. <laughs> it's a recession. Guess what? It's showtime. This is where my gift is needed the most. The, ch the world is in a, in a fix. I got it. Listen to me very closely. If you're going to walk three years, Glenn said it, three years, that dream that you have, that money that you want, if you're going to make it happen, you're going to have to be wired differently. It's only one other cat from Detroit that made it out. We both went to college in Huntsville, Alabama. He still lives there. But out of the 20 guys that used to run together, only two of us made it out of the city and only one of us are doing big things. Now listen to me. A lot of people you meet in life will talk it. A lot of people talk about what they want to do and how they want to get four points. And I laugh because when we do AOP or when we do open house and the students come from Detroit, Flint, Saginaw, and we say, you know, what kind of grades? Everybody and their mama write a 4.0. I ain't never seen a student write, I'm going to get a 2.0 in math. Everybody do the 3, 5, 4.0. But the reality is at the end of the first semester, when we get the grades back, very few kids get 4.0s. Very few get 3.5s. I never see anybody write, I'm going to get in Math 103 a 1.0. But yet at the end of the semester, midterm, when I'm doing midterm eval, I'm seeing like 1.0s, 1.5s, zeros. I got a couple people come in, 18, 25, zeros. I'm like, I don't remember nobody putting zero down. So you need to understand before I talk about this, you need to understand that what I'm about to tell you to do, I did it, I lived it. So if you wanna make six figures, you can't just be talking about you wanna make six figures. You hear what I'm saying to you tonight? If you do the three things I tell you to do tonight, I guarantee you whatever it is you wanna do in life, you'll be able to do. Now let's get away from money. I gotta get deep with you, let's get away from money. Nobody in my family has ever really been married. They don't do the married thing, right? Can you hear what I'm saying? 
Somebody can attest to that. Raise your hand. If your family don't do the married thing, raise your hand. People in your family, they don't do the married thing. Now watch this. I've been married happily for 14 years and I've been married for 16. All right, so I only had two rough years. But in order to get to 16, let me tell you something. My marriage is so, man, I'm telling you, it's so butter tight. I was, see, I might not, they might not be mature for this or not. But last night, I was, me and my wife was slow dancing about 8 o'clock at night to Luther. That's where my relationship is. It's the middle of the day. People don't do that during the middle of the week. They might do it on the weekend. We slow dancing on Monday. I ain't even watching Monday Night Football. I don't even care nothing about Monday Night Football. Because I'm with Luther. Dance with my father. <laughs> my family, they don't do the marriage thing. But I vowed when I was a teenager that not only am I going to get married, I'm only marrying one person for the rest of my life. But I'm telling you, in order to do that, you got to go deep. You just can't live no, a normal life and get to that level. So three things real quick I'm going to share with you. Now, DeAndre told you last week that you should be writing stuff down. Don't come here if you're not going to write it down because it don't make sense. You get some free stuff from the both of us that people pay thousands of dollars for. C will tell you. I've gone to L.A. this summer, and for two days, they gave me 15 grand. That was only for consulting. That wasn't for speaking. When I walked away from L.A., I walked away with 20 grand. How many people you know make 20 G's in two days? That's like $10,000 a day. And tell, was I working hard? No, I wasn't working hard. Why? Because I got the secret right here. I found out the <laughs> see, I shouldn't even be giving it to you tonight for free. Oh, uh, he was working hard. He right, but I gave him a little check. He got a little check. All right, he'll get a bigger one next year. All right, but three things. I'm about to tell you these three things. This is not about Eric Thomas. Listen to me. These are principles that have stood the test of time. Principles that have stood the test of time. And if you do what I'm about to tell you right now, you will be able to accomplish whatever you want to academically, financially, relationally, whatever. So three things. All right, now I'm going to tell you this story. I got to get out of here. The first one is, when I first said I wanted to make six figures, my boy Marcus Flowers, who's probably making seven figures right now, he came to L.A. too. He was with us in L.A. You see all the videos with all the stars? Those are his cars they're driving around in. You see the houses that the rappers, those are his houses in Atlanta that he owns, and they come in and play on. So he's making seven. He taught me how to make money. This is the first thing he came. He told me a story. And the story is about, you guys have probably heard about this before. It was a it was a young man who, you know, he wanted to make a lot of money, and so he went to this guru, right? And he told the guru, you know, I want to be on the same level you are. And so the guru said, if you want to be on the same level I'm on, I'll meet you tomorrow at the beach at 4 a.m. He liked the beach. I said, I want to make money. I don't want to swim. Guru said, if you want to make money, I'll meet you tomorrow, 4 a.m. So the young man got there at 4 a.m. He all ready to rock and roll, got on the suit. He should have wore shorts. The old man grabs his hand and said, how bad do you want to be successful? He said, real bad. He said, walk on out in the water. So he walks out into the water. Watch this. When he walks out into the water, it goes waist deep. So he's like, this guy crazy. I'm, Adrian, he's like, I want to make money. He got me out here swimming. I didn't ask to be a lifeguard. I want to make money. He got me. In. So he said, come out a little further. Walked out a little further. Then he had it right around this area, the shoulder area. So this old man crazy. He making money, but he crazy. He said, come on out a little further. He came out a little further. It was right at his mouth. My man like, I'm about to go back in here. This guy is mine. So the old man said, I thought you said you wanted to be successful. He said, I do. He said, walk a little further. He came, dropped his head in, held him down, hold him down. My man getting scratching, holding him down. I got you. I know you brushed it out, but I got you. He had him held down. I need you for an illustration. He had him held down just before my man was about to pass out. He raised him up. He said, I got a question for you. Somebody answered the question for me. He said, when you were underwater, what did you want to do? Lee, I'm looking for a different word though than lip. What's that word? He said, I wanted to breathe. He told the guy, he said, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. I don't know how many of y'all got asthma here today, but if you ever had an asthma attack before, you short of breath, 
SOB, shortness of breath. You wheezing. The only thing you trying to do is get some air. You don't care about no basketball game. You don't care what's on TV. You don't care about nobody calling you. You don't care about a party. The only thing you care about when you're trying to breathe is to get some fresh air. That's it. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful, as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Some of you love sleep more than you love success. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be willing to give up sleep. You gotta be willing to work off for three hours of sleep, two hours. If you really wanna be successful, some days you will have to stay up three days in a row. Because if you go to sleep, you might miss the opportunity to be successful. That's how bad you gotta want it. You gotta go days without, listen to me, you gotta wanna be successful so bad that you forget to eat. Beyonce said once she was on the set doing her thing, three days had gone by, she forgot she didn't eat. Cause she was engaged, i never forget, uh, when 50 Cent was doing his movie, I did a little research on 50, and 50 said that when he wasn't doing the movie, he was doing the soundtrack. And they said, when do you sleep, 50? Sleep, he said, sleep. Sleep is for those people who are broke. I don't sleep. He said, I got an opportunity to make a dream become a reality. Football players, how many football players? Got anybody like football in here? Raise your hand, anybody like football? Emmitt Smith, I used to be a Cowboy fan before they did my boy Tom Landry wrong. I used to be a Cowboy fan. And watch this, there was a commercial. Emmitt Smith had won his first Super Bowl and he had this commercial when he was lifting weights. I don't know if you saw the commercial when he was lifting and he said, he said, Emmitt said, you know what? Ah, I won the Super Bowl so I can rest now. He, had, he was doing his bench press. So he said, I won the Super Bowl so I can rest now. So he throws up about 325, boom. And he rests for about two seconds. Then he's Boom, boom, boom. Did you see that? He'd already won a Super Bowl. He said, I think I'm gonna take a rest. And he rests for how long? One second. Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. And I'm here to tell you today, if you got a, somebody came to my office the other day crying, I said, look, don't cry to give up. Cry to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You already in pain, you already hurt, get a reward from it. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. Listen to me, I'm here to tell you today that you can come here, you can jump up, you can do flips, you can be excited when we give away money, but listen to me, you will never be successful until I don't have to give you a dime to do what you do. You won't be successful until you say I don't need that money, because I got it in here. So listen to me, Emmett Smith said this at the end of the commercial. Emmett Smith said, all men are created equal, some work harder in preseason. I'm going to say it again because you might have missed it. All men are created equal, some work harder in preseason. So that means that there are some people who are going to see the professor, going to see the TA, and even when the professor says, I don't meet with you, my TA meets with you, you say, I don't want to talk to your TA. That's what it is. I don't pay the TA, That's right. I pay you to teach me. So you gonna have to find some time to meet me. If I gotta meet you at the mall, if I gotta meet you at your house, you are going to see me. Listen to me, all men are created equal. Some work hard in preseason. When I went to college, guys were way smarter than me. 4.0s, 3.0s, they went to the Ivy League high schools, came to Oakwood from these great high schools. Most of them are not doing what I'm doing. Why? Because it's not about where you come from. It's about heart. You come to a place where, you know, being smart ain't enough. You gotta have heart. That's number one. Watch number two. Number two, catch number two. I wrote it down. I wanted to make sure you got it. It says, to be, watch this, watch this. We're talking about sacrifice now. The important thing is this. You're right in why I'm saying it, because I only have about three more minutes. Listen to me. The most important thing is this. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. That's the number two thing, you gotta catch that one. To be able to, listen to me, at any moment, 
Some of you, you can make sacrifices when Monday Night Football is not on. You can make a sacrifice. But when the game come on, for some reason, you just attach to it. For some of you, when your favorite show come on, you, you, can, be, you can make sacrifices on Sunday when there ain't nothing going on. But when your favorite show comes on Monday, bam, some of you, you focus into the phone ring, and then you're like, I got to answer it. If I don't answer the phone, I'm going to die. I'm saying to you today that there are some of you, if you give up your cell phone, you would be successful. But your cell phone is more important to you than your success. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to hurt somebody. I'm going to hurt somebody. Some of you need to give up your cell phone because the time you spend on your cell phone could be used for your success. The time you could be using to be successful, you're using it on the cell. And the cell phone is not bringing you nothing but a bill. And somebody has told you you couldn't live without it. I'm talking about going deep now, giving up stuff. Watch what it says. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what we are for what we could be. I don't do well in math. You're right. You ain't never studied. I'm not good in writing because you have never written before. But I dare you to fail in writing for a whole year to see if you can get to the end. I dare you to fail. I dare you to take that same class over and over again. I dare you to stop dropping classes like you soft. Always want to give up. I'm dropping. Why are you dropping? I'm so grateful that the slaves didn't drop and quit. Say, I'm just going to stop. I'm a slave. I'm just going to be a slave. I'm going to quit. Listen to me. The slaves said, we will live because one day we will become. We won't always be slaves. So today, although we're slaves, we're going to act like we're free. And one day, our children will be free. If the slaves would have just said, we quit, we give up, we would have died in the middle passage. But some slaves said, I don't care what we go through, we're going to survive this. 400 years of slavery, we're going to get through this. And you can't get through an 1825. You can't get through a writing class and you got tutor after tutor, resource after resource. The problem is you ain't never felt no pain before. You're soft. It's a soft generation. You quit on everything. Our people did not quit. Harriet Tubman not only made it, she went back and got some more. She said, you know what, I made it, but I'm, I'm going to walk all, listen to me, shh, not ride the bus. I'm going to walk all the way back down to the south to get some more. And you quitting on 1825? Now watch this, you quit after you, listen to me, you get a sleeping bag and you wait for him. You wait for the first WRA instructor to come in and you come out your sleeping bag, I need help. You quit after you do that. You quit after you had, listen to me, a, a WRA party. I'm, I'm having a party. Everybody come over. I got food, everything. And let them get over there. Let it be all the best writers. All right, I fooled y'all. I want to have a writing party. Wow. <laughs> I'm serious. You quit and you ain't even tried yet. Last one, I'm sorry. Last one. Listen to me. Pain is temporary. It may last for a minute or an hour or a day or even a year. But eventually it will subside and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. Listen to me, I'm telling you as I leave, telling you as I leave, I was homeless for two and a half years. And the problem with most of you, you never felt no pain before, you're spoiled. Y'all spoiled, some of y'all spoiled, just bottom line. Your parents have done everything for you. You never had to do nothing for yourself, you're spoiled. We're gonna keep it real tonight. Some of you are spoiled brats. Every time you ever got in trouble, somebody in your house got you out of it. Every time you've done something you're not supposed to do, people say, Eric, your mother's a tyrant. You're right, she kicked me out, you're right. She's mean, but she developed a man because she put me out there and said, you're gonna have to grow up. And some of you have never learned to grow up. And so every time something get hard, you quit, you call mama. I dare you to take a little pain. I dare you. I dare you not to go home. Somebody said, I don't go home, I feel bad. Go, go through it. You ain't going to die at the end of pain and success. You're not going to die because you're feeling a little pain. 
I'm not eating like I eat at home. That's why you're about to go to the next level because if you keep eating like you ate at home, you'll keep being a boy or a girl. It's time to become man, woman. So don't, don't worry about a little pain. My greatest asset is I was homeless. So I can't feel a whole lot of pain. I've already been alone. There's not a whole lot of, it's not, not a whole lot of hurt I can feel on a little paper, on a little test. So I leave you, I leave you, listen to me. We have gotten to a point where it's midterms and we're moving forward. The days of you getting money, I'm not saying we quitting, but I'm saying the day has got to go from external to internal. You have to give it everything you got. No more TV, no more parties, no more plan. If you don't have a 4.0, what you need to be doing is studying. Get off the phone. I, I, I'm sorry I'm not available until the end of this year. <laughs> No, I'm for real. You reached the right number, but you called me at the wrong time. Call me back January 1st. <laughs> I'm about to get busy now. Huh? I want you to have a countdown of your own and say when the countdown is over, where the real, shh, watch me, because when I was homeless, I knew something was wrong. I knew that wasn't the best of me. And one day I said, will the real Eric Thomas please stand up? Will the real Eric Thomas please stand up? Stop being this high school dropout. Stop giving up. Stop sleeping on the streets. Stop walking up and down Finkel Avenue like you ain't got nothing and get your GED. Stop being afraid to take a test. Stop being afraid to go to college because your daddy didn't go and your mama didn't go. Stop being afraid and be the best Eric Thomas you can be. But listen to me, it's going to be hard. It took me 12 years to get a four-year degree, but I got it. And guess what? On a degree, it don't have dates. So if it took you four and it took me 12, it don't show up nowhere. But I'm exactly where I wanted to be because I realized I got to commit my very being to this thing. I got to I gotta breathe it. I got to eat it. I got to sleep it. And until you get there, you'll never be successful in life. But once you get there, I guarantee you the world is yours. So work hard and you can have whatever it is you want. You will not quit in the universe. You will keep going in your business. You may lose, but you will not stop. You will not quit. You will keep going. I also told my wife, you will, this, this, this disease will not defeat us. This disease will not break us. It will make us better. And everybody that knows my family knows that we took a chronic illness and we took our family to a whole other level. We took a chronic illness and we took our marriage to another level. We took a chronic illness and we beat it. And we will continue to beat it until we destroy it, until we annihilate it, until she no longer has it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You cannot stop, you cannot quit. I remember we came home from the hospital, the doctor gave her a long needle like that. I said, how, how long does she have to do it? She said she has to do it every day. I said, okay, every day for how long? She said, every day for the rest of her life. I said, I will not accept that. There are things in your life that you are accepting because somebody told you that to accept it. I don't care if you're a doctor or not, I will not accept that. We will not, we will not shoot her with, with, with we will not give her a shot with that needle every single day for the rest of her life. Three months later, I got a call that says that now it's a little shorter and you only have to do it three times a week as opposed to every day. And guess what I told him? I said, I'm grateful, but I still won't, I still won't accept that. You would think that because it's only three, I would be excited. I will not accept it. Stop accepting everything. Stop letting people tell you what you can and cannot do. I will not accept it. I don't care if you're a doctor. I will not accept it. And we kept doing our homework and we found out about a pill that you can take. I was like, that's what we need, we need the pill. And I found out the pill shrinks the legions on your brain. I went to the doctor and she said, I would have told you about it, but um, I don't think your insurance company is going to be willing to pay for it. It's $10,000 a month, $120,000 a year. Insurance company denied. My wife went back the second time, they denied. I told my wife, stop begging. I'm 120. Do I give you $10,000 a month or do I give you $120,000 now to get it for the year? I will not, I will not let my wife, whatever it takes, I will not let her take the, I will give 120. I will speak more. I will get better. I will get degrees. I will get training. I'll do whatever it takes. <laughs> 
I will put your health first and you will not be defeated. You will not be destroyed. You will not use a cane. You will not be in a wheelchair. We will beat this. Some of you in this room, you are not able to activate your greatness because every time a trial or a tribulation comes, you fold. You give up. Everybody, every time somebody calls you and tells you you can't do it, you take it personal. Every time somebody tells you you don't have what it takes, you embrace it. And now you got to stand up to it. I never been one time with my wife. I never felt discouraged. I never felt that it wasn't possible. My wife told me just a couple days ago, she says, today I feel like I felt before I got MS. She had a weekend where she felt great, and I told her, it's for a weekend today, but soon it will be for the rest of your life. We will not break. We will not retreat. We will not give up. We will activate our greatness, and we will know what it's like to live the 120. Say, I will live the 120. Come on. I will live the 120. Come on. I will live the 120. Come on. I will live the 120. And if you make up in your mind you're going to live the 120, I went from being homeless, eating out of trash cans, to traveling first class, $100,000 in engagement, back at home, every star. NBA, NFL, whatever. I consult them. I went from being a high school dropout. Why? Because I said, I'm going to get 120. I need you guys to be 124. All right, last one. All right, so most of you may know this guy, Michael Jordan. This is, this is so important, all right, because there are three types of people. They're average, they're good, they're great. Now, the average didn't have to activate anything to be average. Average just it comes with the body. When you're born, average just comes as a part of the package. Right, everybody starts there, average. Then you go from average, you activate good, and then you activate great. And Michael Jordan was considered one of the greatest NBA players that ever played the game. Why? Because he had more championships than anybody in this particular era. Great, great. Great is like, okay, I gotta put this in perspective for you. Because Michael Jordan has six, this is critical. Kobe Bryant has five. There's another guy, Tim Duncan, who has five. Magic Johnson has five. Listen to me, he has, I just told you he's the great, he's considered the greatest player that ever played basketball. This guy has six championships. I just told you, Magic has five. Kobe has five. Tim Duncan has five. And nobody's saying they're the greatest player that ever played the game. He does not have 20 more than the next guy. He does not have five more than the next guy. He only has one more. But that one more makes him great. It does not take a lot to be great. It just means that you do a little bit more than the average person that you are around. It doesn't mean you have to be a, a god, that you have to be a beast. It just means that you're doing more than the average person that's in your circle. So why I love Tony Robbins, why I love Les Brown, why I love Bob Parker, I realized it was one thing they didn't have when I did my homework, and none of them have advanced degrees. So I said, if I get an advanced degree, I put myself just... <laughs> they all wrote books. They're all on YouTube. They all travel the world, but they don't have advanced degrees. And by getting one or two advanced degrees, I can separate myself from those guys. Why? Because even if I lose my career, I can be a professor at a university. I can move to Australia and become a professor at a university right here. Melbourne, I can go right to Melbourne and be a professor at the university. I'm not asking you to do a lot, but I'm asking you that extra. That's going to put you on the whole level. See, go to the next one. This is the sixth championship. Just a couple more than the next person. Just six. Just one more than the average other guy that could have been great. Now, what's so important? This guy, this guy in the, one of the greatest games, like the grand final. He's in the grand final in the NBA. He's in the grand final, and he's sick. He has the flu. He's running the temperature of 102 degrees, and he's dehydrated. This is Michael Jordan. One of the great, the, the last game. This guy is dehydrated. This guy's running a fever, but yet he's still playing the game. He still shows up when the average player is sick. They don't show up. This guy is sick and he shows up. And in the NBA back at home, the average player scores 16 points. This guy scores 38 points with the flu. 
<laughs> this guy scores 38 points. Dehydrated. They're calling more timeouts than ever called before. They're dragging him uh, to the sideline and they're giving him fluids. And he comes back in and scores 38 points to win his sixth championship. And so I started doing my homework and I asked, how do you get 120 when you're sick? How do you get 120 with the flu? And you're playing against the great teams on the other side. Like it's not like a regular game. This is you playing the best of the best and you still put up 38 points. This is what I realized, guys. It's called muscle memory. When you do something every single day, every single day, all day, no days off, no plays off. When you're the first one in and the last one to leave, even when you're sick, your body reproduces what you do regularly. And even though Michael Jordan was sick because he was never average, his body didn't even know how to produce average. Even when he was sick, his body gave him back greatness. And you're wondering why you can't get to that next level, why there's a glass ceiling. Because sometimes you take days off and you take plays off. And if you're going to take over the south, Coast, you're gonna have to no days off, no play. You're gonna take the wet, you're gonna have to no days off, no plays off. You're gonna when everybody else is asleep, you're gonna have to be up. And that's how I got here. I get up at three o'clock in the morning. That's how I got here. I'm giving away free content. That's how I got here. 